Well, hey, and welcome back to another video. So today I wanna to discuss five things I love about my Quad Cortex and why you should consider one in 2024. So I've been on the Quad Cortex now for almost a year and I came from the Kemper. Um, there's a video that I will link up at the top there that kind of describes my switch from the Kemper to the Quad Cortex. And since that video came out, there's been a lot of changes with the Quad Cortex, a lot of updates and refinements. And I think the Quad Cortex, especially going into 2024 now, is in a really good spot. They've made a lot of progress and done a lot of usability updates and things that make the Quad Cortex a very good competitor to all the other things that are on the market right now. And this video is not going to be in any particular order. It's just basically five things that I really enjoy about the Quad Cortex and why I'm going to continue using it into 2024 and why maybe you want to consider the Quad Cortex if you're looking at an amp modeler and effects unit that's all in one. So let's get right to it. So the first thing I want to talk about is form factor of the Quad Cortex. Uh, I find that the footprint of it between the foot switches, you know, there's eight foot switches that you can use actively to select different either presets or stomps or in hybrid mode you have scenes um, and stomps, that kind of thing. I find that the form factor is a very big selling point and a big reason why I keep the Quad Cortex on my board. Um, the Helix, the Tone Master Pro and even the Kemper Stage are much bigger units. Obviously with the Fractal you have the FM3 um, which is probably about the same size as the Quad Cortex. However, I haven't, I don't have one to compare side by side. Uh, but obviously you have less foot switches on the FM3 than you do on the Quad Cortex. So from a form factor standpoint, I find the Quad Cortex to be a good balance. I can put it on a very small board. Uh, here's my board right now. So I essentially have the Quad Cortex and the Boss EV30 expression pedal. I have the Shure GLX D Plus wireless unit and then I have an old Android phone because I'm a nerd uh, that displays the clock on my board. And this is a Temple Audio board and I'm using a, uh, I don't know how you say it, Chox uh, DC7 or Seox, whatever, DC7 power supply. And that's basically been my mainstay setup for the better part of a year since I've had the Quad Cortex. Once I got the Cortex, I wanted to build a really nice board that I could fly with and I could travel with and something that would be compact and not too heavy. With the Kemper, I was lugging it around in a big Pelican case. Now, I did have the toaster and the foot switch combination. I did not have the stage at the time. So the stage probably would have cut down on the amount of gear that I was carrying. But because I wanted to protect the toaster side of the Kemper, and also the foot switch and carry it all together. I got a big Pelican uh, case with wheels and a luggage handle and that's how I lugged that thing around. Now, despite the compact size of the unit, it still has a very nice set of IO. You have two inputs, you have a set of XLR outputs and I believe you have two other sets of quarter inch outputs as well that you can also use as an effects loop. You've got full MIDI in and out, not the mini. MIDI and then you have a USB port for connecting to the editor. You know, you've got two expression pedal spots as well and it's just a very packed input and output layout despite the small size. Now reason number two, again these are in no specific order, just kind of how I wrote them down, um, but the out of box sounds, you know, the out of box presets. Now I'm not a high gain player, I mostly play country music and I found that a lot of the presets are quite usable in my case, you know, maybe I dial down the gain a little bit or turn off some of the effects like a lot of them seem to have wah and stuff on that which is cool but I don't use wah much. But I find overall the presets are extremely usable. I can use them as kind of a template if I want to build something. There is a really nice preset called Godzilla that has some really cool stuff in it that I've used for a few of my kind of 80s um, songs that I'll play in certain bands and with certain groups. <laughs> It also features stereo amplifiers in that specific preset, so it makes it uh, sound really wide and really awesome. So, you know, I, I find that the out-of-box sounds are extremely usable, and that was one thing that 
has also kind of encouraged me to keep exploring, you know, with the, the head rush stuff and, and other units that I've used in the past. I haven't found them super usable with the head rush, especially I've said in my head rush MX five video that I had to put an IR that I loaded myself onto the unit to make it sound anywhere close to the cortex um, from what I was used to anyway. And while that might not be true for all players, I, I found that very true for my specific use case. Whereas the quad cortex, um, everything just seems to sound really good. Just being able to have some experience with it and having used it live and stuff, I find it is a really good um, out of box experience and a really good device to be able to tweak slightly on. And I find I'm doing the one thing that all players should do more of and that's practice or play instead of tweak their sounds because I find that a lot of times you get focused in on one thing you want to change about your sound and then you spend an hour tweaking it. And I find with the quad cortex, I can make a few quick adjustments and I'm right back to playing. I don't feel the need to constantly or incessantly tweak unless of course I want to. Reason number three is DSP capability. Now, it may not be the most powerful unit anymore, even though they tout that on their website, um, because I, I don't really have a objective way to test that. I don't own all the modelers and can't physically load up a ton of things. Um, but I find that the Quad Cortex does have just a boatload of power when it comes to processing effects, processing different amps. Um, I was running a preset for a while that had four different uh, neural captures of amplifiers. You know, the thing obviously that was kind of reaching the top end of its DSP limit, but I've still found that it, I was able to also integrate all the effects that I needed and have all four of those amps just because I wanted to try it out. I wanted to try to load it up and see what would happen if you kind of max out the DSP. Now, what does happen is you lose your global EQ and you also lose your noise gates on the inputs. So those are the two things that the quad cortex will knock off in order to give you that DSP for running as many effects or amps as it will allow for. In my case, as I said, about four amps and I was running it into, uh, I think a stereo IR of a couple of different IRs that I had loaded. But that was kind of a fun thing that I did. And I find that under normal circumstances, if I'm not trying to max it out, it's more than capable. I've got more than enough room to add basically whatever I want. And I find myself having to consciously make different presets um, just for ease of use within different songs so that I know, okay, if I'm going into this next preset, it's going to be a half step down rather than just adding a pitch shift block to my existing preset, which I could do because there's enough DSP. So I find, you know, there, there's no limit to the amount of DSP. And I think as the updates continue to come in for the quad cortex, it's only going to become more powerful because they'll be able to essentially um, make the, the effects less power hungry and maybe make the captures a little bit less taxing on the processor as well. Reason number four is online community and customer support. So if you've watched any of my other videos on the quad cortex, specifically the one that says that my quad cortex broke and left me stranded at a gig, you will know that I've had issues with the quad cortex. And despite that, here I am making this video touting the benefits and the things that I really like about the quad cortex. And a big part of the reason why my tone was not soured, uh, pun intended, was because the customer service of Neural DSP was great. And I had that issue where I was getting static and crackling and stuff like that. And I had to send the unit from Canada where I am to Finland where the repair shop is or where the headquarters is. And they fixed my unit and within two weeks I had it back in my hands. The correspondence and the quickness of response from Neural DSP was fantastic. And so that's a big plus for me for continuing to use the Quad Cortex going forward. Now, in another side of that as well, the online community. So there's obviously the Cortex Cloud, which is a place where you can upload presets and captures and all those types of things that make your Quad Cortex even more capable. You know, lots of people have captured fantastic amplifiers and have set up really nice presets and you have a lot of kind of high caliber musicians that are creating presets for this thing. And there's a lot of third party companies that are making capture packages and IR packages for the Quad Cortex. One in particular that I've purchased from myself is Amalgam Audio and I've bought a Tone King package, which was interesting because they, uh, Neural DSP actually released the Tone King amp 
for the quad cortex about two or three weeks after I bought that package. But I got a couple of other amps. I got a car mercury and I got a two rock as well. And those captures are fantastic. And so, you know, that's just a benefit of the quad cortex kind of ecosystem and something that has kept me really involved and interested in continuing to create and use the quad cortex. Another thing about the customer service side of things now, there was some worry, I think probably about a year ago or more now, about used units not being covered under warranty. Now I believe, I know that uh, NeuralDSP did issue some sort of uh, press release or statement that the units, if they were sold um, as a used unit to you know another another person or whatever they would still be covered under warranty but you have to verify that and verify the serial number and stuff with neural DSP now I believe that's still the case don't quote me on it but I think that they still are honoring that because I know on the used markets like reverb and stuff like that they were getting a lot of flack for the units essentially not being covered under warranty if they're being resold as a used unit and the fifth reason is future expansion. Now there's a saying in the tech world that basically goes somewhere along the lines of you should never buy a piece of technology for the promise of what it's gonna do in the future, but only for what it's gonna do right now when you buy it. And I think that is very true in most cases. However, I think the quad cortex has earned some sort of place in that saying uh, because they have made good on a lot of the promises that they have made along the way. Now there's been a recent update, uh, 2.3.0, I think is the latest one that we're on. It just came out yesterday or the day before, depending on when you're seeing this video. And they've made some subtle refinements and they talked a little bit about the plugin capabilities and porting the plugins over to the Quad Cortex, basically sta sta stating that the Quad Cortex plugin compatibility is still very much in the works and will be delivered soon. Now I know that Neural DSP gets flack for their overuse of the soon word and a lot of people are irritated by that, but I think that this is a big undertaking and I, I'm pretty sure that Neural DSP is a very small team. And they're obviously working in a few different things. They have to keep producing plugins because that's basically their main source of revenue. And they're also trying to continue to develop the quad cortex and therefore sell more devices as well. And I think that it's only going to continue to get more robust, especially as more and more users come on and, and offer suggestions and feedback in the forums. It seems like Neural DSP does pay attention to that. So that's another reason why I do really appreciate the quad cortex and the whole forum and, and community. Uh, the future expansion side of it is very exciting. So why should you consider a quad cortex in 2024? Well, as I said, kind of at the beginning of the video, they've made a lot of refinements. They made a lot of really good updates. There's a desktop editor now, which wasn't on the unit originally when it was released. It just came out maybe three months ago or so, and it is being updated all the time as well. And if you're looking at a bunch of the competitors, you know, the Fender Tone Master Pro, the Fractal products, the FM3 or the FM9 or the Helix, um, you're basically, you're overwhelmed with options. And I've used a few of those products, I've not used them all, so I'm not going to speak to all of them, but I'm going to talk about my specific experience with the Quad Cortex thus far and why I'm going to likely continue to use it. So my first foray into the modeling world was the Digitech GNX4. I think I had like an RP50 or RP20 or something before that, but the GNX4 was kind of the first thing that I used for any length of time. It wasn't great and you know, it was a really old model and I got it from my uncle who had had it for a little while and then I put modeling stuff down for a while and just focus on using amps and pedals and then I got into using a Line 6 Helix and at the time it was a brand new product and everyone was kind of excited about it but I didn't find that the sounds that I was getting from it were exactly what I wanted so a lot of the guys that I was playing with were using Kempers at the time and were kind of recommending I go towards a Kemper so that's when I purchased the Kemper. And the Kemper was fantastic but when the Quad Cortex was released and you know, all the hype surrounding it I kind of wanted the nice and new shiny thing. If you're considering moving from another unit to a Quad Cortex I think as I mentioned before this is a great time to do it. Um, there's been so many updates and stuff that has made the Quad Cortex so much 
more user friendly and just a lot more competitive in the space. I think 2024 is just gonna be a great year for it as well. I, I have no insider information. I'm not even a beta tester or anything like that. Um, but I just, I do really like this product and I've been really happy with what I've experienced in my shift from the Kemper. Also in terms of sound quality, I think the Quad Cortex sounds fantastic. It's not the lowest latency modeler that's out there. I think that goes to the Boss stuff. Um, if you're on more of a budget, then maybe the Boss stuff might be a good direction to check. However, this is about the Quad Cortex, so we'll try to stick on that topic. Uh, but I've just been really happy with the unit since I've had my issues and got everything resolved. It's been something that has allowed me to become a better guitar player. Um, as I said before, a big part of that is because it allows me to play more and tweak less unless I want to tweak. If I want to, that's, you know, you can get very granular and very specific with things, but it really just has allowed me to express myself to my fullest potential. And while I think that it's very possible with most of the units on the market today because frankly they all sound good and if they don't it's probably your fault. I think the Quad Cortex just fits that form factor and sound quality thing for me and that's why I really think you should consider one if you are looking at an amp modeler and effects unit kind of all in one and slimming down your board and something that is going to be able to keep up with you in the future. So if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that like button. It really does help me out. If you have any comments, please drop them down in the comment section below. I try my best to answer all of them. And as always, thank you for watching.